G'day. If you are new to Blender, then welcome. You're in the right place. This is a complete beginner's tutorial series designed to show you how to use all the main features of Blender whilst learning how to create a delicious donut and some coffee. Now, I know you are excited, you wanna start clicking on things and learning things, but since this is part one of a series, I wanna take just 60 seconds to explain what you will learn and what you won't learn. So, right now, this is you. You are a little red dot and you are entering into the wide world of 3D. And if you've done any research, you probably know there is a lot to learn and it can be a little overwhelming and you can feel like I'm never gonna learn it all, so why bother? Well, the good news is you don't need to know everything. If you're familiar with the 80-20 rule, there is really only 20% of the features inside 3D software that you use 80% of the time. And that is what this course is all about. It's teaching you those core concepts that you're gonna use all the time so that you can then, by the end of it, feel confident creating your own projects in the future. Uh, so this is all going up for free on YouTube um, and I've just separated it by level just like in terms of chapter, so you know what to expect in terms of difficulty. But if you follow it from start to finish, rest assured, you can create a donut and coffee. That final image there, um, you can get there because there are half a million people who completed the last version of this tutorial that I made three years ago. There's even a blended donut subreddit where you can see the results of people that finished the last course. So it might look advanced at this stage, like, oh, I don't know 3D, how am I gonna, you know, you can get there, right? If you just follow it through to the end. Now, this is part one of level one. So this is gonna be the basics of the basics. And we are gonna start with the user interface. And just to keep it interesting, I promise you, if you finish the end of this video, you will learn how to set a monkey head on fire. Yeah. Random, but you'll see. So open Blender for the first time, and this is what you should see. Now this big area here, this big patch of space is called the 3D viewport. And it's where you'll spend probably 90% of your time. If you're modeling something, if you're like laying out a scene and you're moving things around, it's all gonna happen right here. So let's talk about moving stuff. So we have the cube here, the default cube selected, and let's say we wanna move it. So if you go to the toolbar, you've got a move, uh, uh, function, <laughs> right? And when you do that, you'll see that you get these arrows that appear over your cube. Now, if I just click and drag on any of these arrows, you can see that I'm moving it along that direction, that axis. So there's three axes, because there are three dimensions in the world, the uh, Z axis, the X axis, and the Y axis. So along those, I can sort of move it anywhere within this space here. Okay, so that's moving. And then the next one underneath that, you've got rotate. I can rotate something along a specific axis. Or by the way, if you just like don't click on any of these like highlighted colors, just click anywhere in there, it's gonna like trackball it, <laughs> which is like just free rotate. Um, if you re uh, release, by the way, it's gonna like, re sorry, release the mouse. It's going to like drop it wherever you set it to. But if while rotating it, you just right click, um, it's gonna like cancel the action or you hit escape, right? Um, but anyways, then you've got scale. So if I click the scale option, now I've got uh, these, uh, that function there or, or, or this axis, or that axis, uh, etc. cetera. Um, or click anywhere within there and now you're scaling just the size of the thing. Okay, so move, rotate, scale. Um, and then by the way, that one down there is like, all three of them mashed in together for, I don't know, people who are running out of time and they need to click them all at the same time for some reason. But anyways, that that's how you can do things, but actually the faster way to work is to memorize the hotkeys because you're gonna use this a lot and every time you wanna like rotate or scale something, if you have to go up here, then click on this, then click on this, it's a lot of work. It doesn't sound like it, but when you're doing it like repeatedly, hundreds of times an hour, it it's a lot of work. So what I would suggest you memorize is the hotkeys. So to move something, it's G. G for grab, okay, G. And when you do that, it's attached to your cursor. So you just tap the key once and you don't have to like click or hold or anything like that. It's now attached 
to my cursor. If I right click, I'm canceling the movement. But if while it's moving like that, if I just left click, it's now confirmed the movement. Um, now it's, it's free movement right now. So if I was to push the letter of any of those axes like Z, I'm now moving it along the Z axis or X or Y. Okay, so again, that, that's while it's moving. If I hit any of those keys, I can snap it to that axis. Or instead of having to like do a separate key, so while it's moving, if instead of hitting those axes buttons, if I hold down the middle mouse button, which is, uh, did I talk about the middle mouse? I didn't talk about it. I've recorded this tutorial five times. Uh, <laughs> if you click in on the, the scroll wheel, that's the middle mouse button. And if you hold that in, you'll see that it's like snapping it to a specific axis. Um, so that's actually a really fast way to work. So if I hit G, I can move it down. So G, quickly tap middle mouse to get it to the right axis, then click, then G, quickly tap middle mouse, get it to the right axis. I can do this and I can move this cube anywhere. And it's a really fast way of working. Um, it's great. And those hotkeys work the exact same way. So, uh, sorry, for, for rotate and scale. So if while rotating, free rotate, X, Y, Z, or middle mouse, and I'm gonna rotate it along the X axis. Scaling, again, I don't have to be in scale mode. I can just hit S, S for scale, and that's gonna scale it like that. Or I can S, scale along the Y axis by tapping Y, X, Z, or S, middle mouse button, and snap it to a specific axis that I have in mind. Okay, so those hotkeys, G, R, and S, Tip of the iceberg, my friends. A lot of hotkeys to come. <laughs> There's a lot of hotkeys in Blender. And uh, so I created a shortcut PDF with like all the keyboard shortcuts. So if you join my email newsletter, um, I'll send you that. It's a PDF that you can print out and stick on your wall or a Google Doc that you can like save and reference on a separate monitor or whatever. Um, but the link for that is in the description if you are interested because we're gonna learn more hotkeys, okay? So the next hotkey is uh, moving around, like navigating within this space here because we're just looking at it from this view. But let's say this cube was all the way off screen. Where's it gone? How are we gonna see it now? So if you use the middle mouse button, which is again, the scroll wheel, if you push that in, if you hold that down, that is called orbiting or rotating the view, <laughs> but orbiting, right? Um, and that enables you to rotate around the view. Now you'll see that it, it, we can't really get close to that cube there because we're just looking at the center of our scene right now. So if we want to pan to a separate area, if we hold down shift middle mouse button and drag across, then we are looking at a new area. So those two uh, functions, middle mouse button to orbit, and then shift middle mouse button to drag to a new section are very common. So I can go anywhere in my space just with those, those two functions, shift middle mouse button to pan, middle mouse button to orbit. So just familiarize yourself with that. Just try to move around to different areas of the canvas, the 3D view, um, <laughs> like so. Now. If, perchance, you do not have a mouse with a scroll wheel or you're on a laptop with a trackpad, good luck with that, by the way. Tough road ahead. Uh, no, but uh, there is a, another way, which is to use this gizmo in the top right-hand corner. If you just click and drag anywhere within that, that is orbit. And then if you click this hand tool and just hold, um, that will move it. So this, this whole gizmo section here was designed, um, it's, it's a new feature of Blender, but it's basically designed because, you know, we know that tablet devices and everything are on the rise. And at some point people are gonna start using them on Surface tablets or something and they've only got a stylus. So if you don't need a mouse, uh, you know, with all the functions to, to move around Blender anymore. You've got this if you needed it. Or by the way, let's say, you know, you just don't have the, the scroll wheel thing, but you, you don't wanna have to keep using the gizmo. If you go to your user preferences, you'll see something there in input called emulate three button mouse, which will just enable you to use alt and then left click as the middle mouse alternative essentially. So uh, yeah. The other one I quickly mentioned because I think I've been doing it without realizing, uh, scroll wheel, that's zoom, um, or you can click 
uh, that little hold down the little magnifying glass thing and you'll zoom in and out. Now, the cube is over there and we could get to it by panning over there, but when you've got a lot of stuff in the scene, like let's say we duplicate this cube, which uh, you could do by going to object and then click on duplicate objects, but you can see the hotkey there. You can memorize that hotkey, shift D. Uh, we can move that cube over there, right? So we're like, we're looking at the cube over here, but now we've got to get all the way over there. A lot of work. So if you just click on an object and you want to focus on that, like just zoom over there. If you hit the number pad period key, which is, yeah, that little dot in the bottom corner of your number pad, it will focus on that object, okay? So that's a very fast way of like changing your focus. So you don't have to like fart around with like, oh, I gotta move over there, extra slow, nice and easy now, easy does it, don't get lost, right? Um, and by the way, going back to people with a laptop, um, most laptops don't have number pads. So the other hotkey that you should memorize um, is the tilde key, which is that key underneath the escape key. Um, there's one there that says view selected. So uh, it'll bring up a pie menu and one of the options in the pie menu is view selected and release. And there we go. It does the exact same thing as, uh, as number pad period key. All right, let's delete this little uh, extra cube. Let's find my original cube. And I'm gonna move this over back to the center with G, middle mouse, to drag it along the Y axis. And then I'll hit number pad period again and focus on that cube. And look at that, we're back at the start. Now, there's more to Blender than just cubes. So let's make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna delete the cube here by just tapping delete or X if you're, don't want your arm to move as far. <laughs> um, let's replace it. So I've deleted the cube. Now I'm gonna to go to the top X, uh, section up here. You'll see one that says add, um, and you'll get a whole bunch of options that will appear here and you can replace it with something. But it's a long way to go for your mouse when you're adding stuff frequently in Blender. Uh, so shift A is a very common hotkey that you should memorize, shift A. Memorize it as add. I'm adding something, shift A. Um, and you got a whole bunch of stuff here. Now, oh, by the way, this will this will be uh, applicable like if you're in the node view or if you're in other views within Blender. So shift A is a good one to memorize. Now there's a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, some things that I've never used before, like speaker. Don't know what that does. It's just it's useful to someone, but not to me. The main ones you'll use are underneath mesh. You got a whole bunch of uh, what are called primitives, like plane, you could add in a plane and it's uh, the ground plane. Um, you got a whole bunch of other really like boring sounding ones. And then you got one right at the bottom there, it's called monkey. So obviously we're gonna click it. And this brings us into the final part of this video that I promised you, we're gonna set this monkey head on fire, which is a cruel thing to do, but it's not real. So no need to email me. Uh, so, with the monkey head selected, we're gonna use a little Easter egg feature of Blender, but it's like, basically, uh, if you push F3, this allows you to bring up the search bar, which is actually very common. This isn't the Easter egg part, but F3 is like, you can search for anything. Like, if you forget the shortcut for something, you can just like type it in and there it is, and you can, you can do it. But uh, if we type into the search bar, smoke, you'll see there's one there called quick smoke. And what this does is it has applied a smoke simulation to my selected object, um, which basically just saves you from like setting up a box and then setting a smoke sim and blah, 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 blah. Um, it's just done that for you. And then if I hit that play button right at the bottom there, you can see it's smoking. Um, now I promised you fire though. So if you select the monkey and then click the simulator panel button, which you know, it's getting a bit advanced, but just in here, uh, where it says smoke, if you change that to fire and smoke, then there you go. You have set the monkey head on fire. Um, pretty random, but hey, it's cool, right? So uh, that's the end of this video. Go ahead, click here to watch the next video where I promise you we will start building that donut because this was just user interface fooling around showing you the basics. Um, and if you haven't already, go ahead and get my PDF, keyboard shortcut PDF, link is in the description because that'll come in handy for the rest of the series. So I will see you in the next video.